Okay, in this third part, we're going to look at the idea of resistance. So if we take, <coughs> pardon me, if we take our little light globe, and let's draw it over here, there's the little filament in the light globe. So there's the light globe. If we actually look at that filament in a bit more detail, so we zoom in on that section just there, and we zoom it right in, and there's a piece of our filament right there. And these filaments are obviously made of atoms. And often they're made of, of atoms of a metal or an alloy which offer a fair bit of resistance. Now, what is resistance? Well, if these positive circles represent the, the nuclei of atoms in our wire, that's our filament wire, then we know that if there's some sort of a charge applied to this, in other words, current wants to flow through this, this filament, what will actually happen is that these electrons that are trying to flow through, they will actually, some of them will actually hit these, these positive charges or these, or these atoms. And every time an electron hits one of these, it's going to create some heat. And that represents a barrier to the electrons. In other words, it makes it harder for the electrons to flow through. So, in a sense, resistance, resistance is exactly what the word implies. It's the property of a material to resist the property of a material to resist or impede the flow of current or flow of charge, I should say. So the greater the resistance, the more difficult it is for the electrons to flow through that material. So the greater the resistance, the more difficult it is for electrons to flow. through the material. Okay, now resistance, this idea of resistance is actually measured in a, a unit called ohms. So for example, a 100 ohm resistor, and by the way, the Greek symbol for ohm is that, so one, a 100 ohm resistor would offer more resistance than a 20 ohm resistor. And, um, and if obviously a 5 ohm resistor would offer even less resistance. So the greater the resistance, the greater the resistance of the, of the wire or the filament, the more difficult it is for electrons to pass through. And what actually ends up happening is that that, that will have the effect of reducing the current. So the more, the more difficult you make it for the current to flow through, it's going to try to reduce the current. In the same way that, if I just cleared this for a moment, in the same way that if we had a freeway of traffic, here's our freeway with one, two, three, four, five lanes of traffic carrying a whole lot of traffic in that freeway. 
But if we put a resistance in here, if we actually blocked four of those lanes, so the only lane here was that one there, then the amount of traffic flowing would drastically reduce and, uh, and that, would cause, that would cause basically gridlock all the way back along the freeway. So you can think of resistance, this is like an analogy we can use to think of resistance, um, the greater the resistance, the more it's going to reduce or block the flow of current in the circuit. In the same way that adding barriers onto lanes of a highway or freeway will block the flow of traffic and therefore reduce the amount of traffic flowing through this section of the road. Adding resistance will reduce the flow of current in a circuit. And what we can then do is, pardon me, what we can now do is put the idea of resistance together with the ideas of voltage and current and start analysing full circuits. And that will be the, the subject of our next program. So thank you very much.